Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. I don't know about you guys, but my parents were always yelling at me about sitting too close to the TV. Did blah, 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 glasses, blah, blah, blind, blah, blah, go outside and play with your friends. I mean, Ma, you know I don't have any friends. Why do you keep bringing it up? Anyway, back on topic. Is there truly a correct distance to sit from your screen? Well, let's start with unpacking the claim that sitting too close to the TV is bad for your health. Well, as it turns out, this widespread belief may have originated from a legitimate concern over a TV recall in the 1960s, where a certain line of defective televisions actually did emit a significant amount of X-ray radiation. That is bad for your eyes and everything else. But given there haven't been any reports of this problem since then, why are people still concerned about it? Well, eye strain is something that you've probably experienced after focusing on anything for a long enough period of time, even books or magazines. This happens because the muscles attached to your eyes tense up to help them focus. So just like any other muscle, if you tighten them up for long enough, they start to ache. And there is some truth to this effect being stronger with a backlit source. If your eyes need to be constantly adjusting between the brightness of your screen and the sharply contrasting darkness of your room, you'll experience this eye strain fatigue more quickly. There is good news though. You can slow down the effects by blinking more frequently to moisturize your eyes, glancing away from your book or monitor periodically, and by using a moderate brightness that's not too dissimilar to the brightness of your surroundings. That and eye strain is easily relieved and doesn't cause any long-term problems as far as we know. Just rest your eyes for a while by moving to a dark environment or relaxing them by not focusing on anything too intently. With that said, we still don't recommend sitting too close to your screen. Not because it'll hurt you, but because it'll hurt your viewing experience. As we explained in our video on retina displays, which you can check out up here, the correct distance to sit from your screen is at least far enough where you can't make out individual pixels that will make the image look blocky and distorted. So if you're in the market for a new display, there's a simple way that you can figure out what size you should buy. For a 1080p display, figure out how far you'll be sitting from the screen and divide the distance by about 1.6 to get the size of the largest TV or monitor you should purchase. You may even want to get something slightly smaller to be on the safe side with respect to image quality, but there's no reason to get something much smaller than the formula recommends. As for 4K displays, the pixels are much smaller, so you can get away with buying a larger screen, especially as that will make it easier to see details that the higher resolution makes possible. So for 4K, your display size should be about the same as your viewing distance, or just slightly smaller. And that's it! Once you've done some simple math, purchased the right display, oh, and maybe installed some bias lighting, which we covered here, behind the display to improve contrast and reduce eye strain even further, you're all set to sit on your butt and stare at TechWiki for as long as you want. We won't tell your mom. Today's episode is brought to you by Random Facts About Bears. Did you know that when bears hibernate, they actually don't have to go to the bathroom? Any waste material is converted into protein, which is weird and gross. Our next bear fact comes from a hunting story involving U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt. The story goes that President Roosevelt was hunting bears when his party saw a wounded black bear cub. Teddy ordered a merciful death for the cub, and the story was memorialized in a political cartoon in the Washington Post. Seizing an opportunity, a New York toy store owner started manufacturing teddy bears, and the name stuck. Could they have just, like... Taken to a vet? That actually seems like it would have been a lot more humane. Anyway, the Malayan sun bear is also known as the honey bear because honeycombs and bee larvae make up such a large part of its diet. Hmm, bee larvae. Anyway, you can get your very own free bear over at tunnelbear.com slash Linus. We've got that linked below. It's a VPN software. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, leave a comment if you have a suggestion for a future video. Check out our other channels and subscribe with the bell icon.
Okay. No, 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 no. Lower priority. Let's get the thing done. You're not going to defeat He's them all. On the screen. You cannot defeat them all, Dennis. Okay, let's get the pickups done. I got a meeting.